Hi, everybody. Good morning, good morning. So one of the most impactful things at the last um, workshop that I did in Orlando was the personality profiling and mirroring and matching. So I decided I wanted to give you guys a mini version of this. I have to give you a disclaimer before we start because I tend to offend people when I'm acting out their personality and people have actually stomped out of the room and been like, I am not like that. I'm giving you exaggerated examples of what different personalities are so that you know how to identify them. So I'm not trying to offend anybody, okay? <laughs> I know that sounds funny, but it really does happen. I had one lady storm out of there and go, I can't believe you said I'm amiable. I am not amiable. <laughs> she like left. <laughs> So the whole purpose of personality profiling and mirroring and matching is to help you build rapport very, very quickly and know the words to avoid when you're talking to people and the words to use when you're talking to different types of personalities. And where it gets really, really interesting is when you have some, you have a couple in front of you and one is one way and the other one is a different way and you have to keep changing back and forth. So we'll go over that a little bit too. Tiffany, do we have the chart that we can pull up or do I need to pull it up from my screen? I did drop it into the chat. You did? Yeah. Right, can I can share my screen that? so I can bring it up? Yes, you can. Okay, perfect. Bear with me, guys, and I will bring this up for you. Maybe. Well, where is it? Hold on. Gotta find it. All right, it's pulling up. It's very important that it pulls up for you guys. Can you see that? Somebody shake their head. Yes? Okay, perfect. All right, so notice on the personalities, I did equate this to DISC as well. However, that is not the terms that I use. So when you first meet somebody at open houses or anywhere, even if you're just meeting somebody out at a store or you're talking to somebody on the phone, it doesn't matter. What matters is picking up that they are thinking based or feeling based and whether they are slow paced or fast paced. That's the most important key element when you're talking to somebody to identify who they are and what type of personality they are. Now, I want to talk about the driver for a minute. The driver is very thinking based. They're very fast paced. So let's say they're walking into your open house. They're going to walk in. They're going to try to walk right past you. They're going to be like, just checking things out, walking right on by. You've got to stop them. You're going to know that they're a driver because they're all about time and efficiency. And so while they're trying to bulldoze past you, number one, they don't want you to try to sell them anything. But number two, they're so fast paced that they're worried you're going to be bored. Now, if they walk into your open house or if you're on the phone with them or you meet them at a store or wherever you're meeting people and you talk like this with them and you slow down your speed, you are going to lose them in 30 seconds flat. You have to speak quickly with them. So as they're walking past, you're like, hi, how are you? I'm just gonna tell you the story of the home and then I'm gonna set you free. And they're like, oh, okay. They'll stop for a minute because you met their speed of speech. Now with a driver in any transaction, it's very important with the thinking based that you're not going into that feeling conversation. Don't ask them how they feel about something. They don't, that's not, that's not gonna equate in their head. They're gonna be like, what do you mean, what do I feel about it? You mean, what do I think? Because thinking is where their brain works. So they're not gonna be the feely touchy kind. They're not gonna be the one that wants to, wants to hear anything about you on a personal level at all. They're the one that you need to keep business, move forward, be quick, be on time, be efficient, and do not give them wrong information. If you give them wrong information, you're dead in the water. A driver is one of those people that if you're a team leader and they're working with one of your team members, they're gonna wanna talk to your team leader because they feel that they are above the other people. They wanna talk with the best. They wanna talk with the smartest, who they see as the smartest. Maybe you as a team member are actually smarter than your team leader, it can happen. They don't care. They want the prestige of working with the team leader. So don't be offended if they ask for that. 
The worst thing you can do with them is waste their time. So I want you to think about, you make an appointment to go show property to a driver and you're going to be 15 minutes late. You are dead in the water. You need to be early to meet with a driver. And if you're going to be late, they better have had sufficient time to know that you are going to be late or they are not going to talk to you again. You want to compliment their successes. They are the people that have the awards in their office. They are the people that have their college graduate documents all over, all their diplomas and their awards and everything. And they're gonna be the ones that are gonna tell you about their kids that are in Ivy League school. You want to compliment their accomplishments and their family's accomplishments and, be, and talk to them about, you know, you must be so proud of your son that he made it to that school. That's amazing. Look at what a, what a parent you are that they got there because that's important to them. Do we have any questions about a driver in this moment? Anybody? No? Okay. So in expressive, and I want you guys to be identifying what you are in this because it's very important. In expressive, an expressive is gonna be hyper, okay. George says he's a high D and yes, in many cases he is, but you know how he's like on here and he's like, la, 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 la. That's, that's his expressive side that comes out. I am naturally an expressive. Tiffany is very expressive. Bonnie is very expressive. So when you're thinking of expressive, you wanna think of these people. They are very fast paced, but they are feeling based. So if you ask them, well, what do you think about that? They're gonna be like, think about that. What do you mean? How do I feel about that? This is how I feel about that. They are all about popularity and friendships and having people over and they love people around them and they don't want to be slow they're also very hard to keep on task that's the problem with an expressive you've got to tell them before you go to a showing hey we have this much time to see these properties and my job is going to be to keep you on task to look at these properties because otherwise we're going to talk about everything else and we're not going to see these properties and they understand what you're saying. They accept it about themselves. It's perfectly okay. So when you're talking to an expressive, especially if you're like showing a property or they're in an open house or whatever, you're going to talk about, can you see all of your friends being here? Like imagine the parties you could have. Or, you know, look at the neighborhood. This looks like a fun neighborhood because expressives and eyes are all about fun and entertainment and joyfulness and being around people and they believe that everybody is their friend, even if they're not, if you're an acquaintance, you're their friend and they're gonna get invited to something. That's just how it is. Sunshine, I have to ask, are you sitting on a bouncy ball? <laughs> I see her head bobbing. <laughs> that is so funny. So when you are working with an expressive, the things that you need to be concerned about is time management, staying on task. They will make decisions very, very quickly. So if they walk into a home, even if you have five or six that are like, that are being set up to show and they walk into a home and they're like, nope, this is the one. I can see everything I wanna do in this home. Go ahead and write the contract because that's how quick they make a decision. When they go buy a car, they'll walk in the lot, they'll pick the car they think is the prettiest color. They'll take it for a test drive. They're like, yep, it's fast enough. I'm going to buy that car. They don't test drive another car. They just buy it. Very quick to make decisions. Now, as far as referrals, expressives are a little challenging with referrals because when you're out of sight, you're out of mind. They're focused on their newfound friends, not the ones who sold them a house a year ago. So in the meantime, if they have met another realtor, after you sold them your home, their home, they are then going to start talking about that realtor because they're fresh on their mind and they're their new friend. So you've got to stay in front of them regularly, all the time to make sure that another realtor doesn't take your spot in the realtor realm in their life. Very important. Now, when they walk into an open house, again, they're going to be quick. You've got to make things exciting. So again, if you're if you're an I or if you're an S or you're a C or an analytical or an amiable and they walk into your open house and you're just kind of slow paced and the story's not exciting and 
you know, and you're like, you know, look at, look at this kitchen. I mean, they, they did a lot of upgrades on this kitchen. They're not going to be into what you're saying. They're going to take off. They're going to go do their own thing. But if they walk in and their tonality is fast paced and, and higher pitched, and they're all excited to be there, you need to match that. So it needs to be, hi, how are you? I'm so glad you found me. I'm going to take you through the home. Is that okay? I'm going to tell you the story. You want to hear it? It's exciting. They'll listen to you because you've captured their attention. If you're boring, you're done. You got to keep it up paced. So, and that becomes a challenge for the analyticals and amiables out there because they don't like to be high, high paced like that. They don't like to be high pitched. They don't want to talk fast. They don't want to do any of that. And you have to learn to be a chameleon with the driver and the expressive because they are so fast paced and you'll lose them if you're not. Any questions about either the dominant or the, the expressive, the inspiring? Just a, a general question I have, um, because sometimes you don't have a lot of time to kind of discern who these, who they are. And so how do you quickly recognize or, because you don't want to do it the wrong way. So mm -hmm. for instance, if you're saying you're going to, you, you believe somebody is amiable and they actually are expressive, you could actually kind of work, work opposite what you want. You, you can, but people usually have two. Okay, there's a dominant personality and then there's a secondary personality and we'll get into that in a minute, but that's a really good question, Peter. And how that works is when they, so let's say they're walking into an open house, you will see them immediately and know whether they're fast paced or they're slow paced. You're gonna be able to pick up on that. All you need to pick up on in that moment is fast paced or slow paced. The thinking based and feeling based doesn't matter when you first meet them. So let me give you an example, okay? You have an amiable or you have a, an analytical walk into an open house and they walk in and they're kind of quiet. They're kind of scanning the room, okay? You're sitting over in your area. They're walking in slowly, checking things out. You already know they're slow paced. If they open their mouth and you say, hi, how are you? How did you find us today? Because usually when I first greet, if it's not apparent, I'll be neutral. I'll be right in the middle of pace. I'll be like, how, how did you meet? How did you find us today? And I wait for their answer. Their answer determines if they're slow paced or fast paced. You're gonna be able to tell in that moment. You can tell within 30 seconds whether they are slow paced or fast paced. That's what you need to focus on because you know if they're fast paced, they're either a dominant driver or they're an inspiring expressive and they're gonna, you're gonna have to keep that pace. And you know, and that means that they're either gonna be thinking based or feeling based, but that doesn't matter. Yet. And then you know, if they're slow paced, that they're gonna be that, that amiable or that analytical and you're gonna maintain that slow pace. And that's where the mirroring and matching comes in. You've already alleviated two sides by determining which one they are. Just in a small conversation with them, you will be able to tell if they're thinking based or feeling based. Very rarely will you have somebody that is an analytical expressive. That's almost never. Well, I mean, I've met two people that that's the case. Very rarely are you going to meet somebody that's an amiable driver. Very rarely. But interestingly enough, there's actually somebody on this call that fits into that category, which is the rarest of all. Okay. Does that help answer your question, Peter? Perfect. All right, so let's move to the amiable and then we're gonna talk about some techniques on mirroring and matching and how to get you through to success on some of these personalities. The amiable is, amiable is gonna be slow paced. They're gonna be feeling based. You're gonna notice that they're slow paced immediately. You're gonna be able to tell that they're feeling based, especially when they start questioning their ability to make a decision. Now, amiables do not get mad at me here. Amiables are probably one of my most challenging personalities to be a chameleon with. And that is because they need everybody under the sun to help them make a decision. They're gonna pay, they're gonna like, if it's a younger person, they need their parents involved, their brother involved, they're everybody involved. And when you start to pick up on, okay, they're slow paced, they're feeling based, 
This means that I'm gonna have an entourage when I go show property. And if I don't have an entourage with us, we're gonna to have to go back and see the property several times until the entourage has all seen the properties because they cannot make a decision to save their life without everybody's opinion under the sun. And it may be just be friends, maybe, you know, whoever. Now here's the things that you need to know about an amiable. An amiable because they need the opinions of others and we need to limit their options. You don't wanna give them too many options because that's overwhelming for them. Once you give them two or three options, that's it. Don't go show them seven properties. It's too much for them. Pick the top three to show them and go show them those three properties and see how they feel about it. And make sure that whoever their main decision maker is, is with you because they're gonna need to bounce off of that other decision maker before they fully make a decision. Now, if they feel pressured about their choices in any way, they are going to go into a fight or flight mode. You may have had clients in the past who kind of fit this category, but you didn't know. And you needed to push them into a decision. I mean, it was time to make a buying decision or it was time to list. And so you kind of pushed them a little bit to try to get them out of their own way. And all of a sudden, one of two things happened. They either popped off at you and you never saw that coming and they start yelling at you. And you're like, I, I don't even know why you're so mad at me. Or they are going to flight. All of a sudden, they drop off the face of the planet and they never answer your phone call again, ever. They don't answer your text. They don't answer your phone call. You don't know what happened. It's because they're amiable and you push them and they went into fight or flight. You cannot win them back once that happens. You are done. So I want you to think about the clients in the past that that happened with. You may be able to resurrect them if they yelled at you because it means they're still communicating with you, but they're voicing their frustration. But if they flight, they've blocked your number and your email and they are never planning on talking to you again. And they're never gonna tell you why. They do not like conflict. So you need to speak slowly with them. You need to make them feel safe, secure, that they have your approval and your appreciation of them. And these people will be your biggest referral source out of any other client that you will ever meet. Because once they feel that you care about them and they trust you and you have their best interest at heart, they're friends, literally friends, like genuinely friends with everybody. And they will tell them all about you. Now on the flip side, you push them and you upset them, they will tell more than everybody they know about you. So you need to be very careful with that personality because they can make or break you in a lot of ways. Any questions about the amiable or um, and supportive role? No? We're good? All right, awesome. All right, we're going to analytical. Analyticals are very slow to make decisions. They do a lot of research. When they walk in, they're going to be slow paced. You're going to pick up on their thinking based. And one of the ways you're going to pick up on them being thinking based is they are going to look to the side a lot or look up. They're like, or they'll put their hand on their chin or they'll tell you about the research that they've done. So let's say they walk into an open house. They're going to test you, by the way, of your knowledge. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. They'll walk into your open house or you're on the phone doing discovery with them. Maybe you got them as a lead and you're asking them questions. And all of a sudden they start to tell you, yeah, I did a lot of research about this. Oh, really? The question you need to ask them is, how long have you been conducting your research? Don't be surprised if they tell you two or three years. Now to all of the other personalities in, in the room here, that's mind boggling to us. Okay. Like me as an expressive, when somebody tells me that they've done three years of research on that, on something, I'm like, why can you not just make a decision? <laughs> but they're looking at me like, why don't you step back and take a minute and think about it? And that's an interesting dynamic, especially if you're in relationships. Okay. If you're an expressive and you're with an analytical, it causes a lot of conflict because they're like, just stop and think about it. And like, let's research. And you're like, no, I want to move forward. I don't understand. <laughs> so you have to be careful with that.
But the analytical, if you give them too many options, they are gonna have to stop and rethink it all again. It could be another three years before they pull the trigger. <laughs> I want you to really think about that in your head. So let me give you an example of this because the only way that I can do this is to give you a story of an analytical. An analytical did all of the research to buy a TV. He had researched for a long time. He knew exactly what TV he wanted. He knew exactly how much that TV was gonna be. He knew exactly what store it was gonna be in. This is the one. So he gathers his money. He goes into the store. He finds the TV. He looks at it and a salesperson walks up. And the salesperson says, how can I help you today? And he says, well, I wanna buy this TV. And he says, well, why? Why do you want to buy that TV? So the analytical tells him all the reasons why he wants to buy that TV. Obviously, he's done his research. And the salesperson looks at him and says, well, what about this TV? It does this, this, and this, and it's this price. The analytical is like, okay. And then he goes, and then there's this TV over here, and it's this price, and it does this, 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 and this. Oh, Okay, I, I, I didn't research that one. Okay. And then he gives him another one and says, and this one is the Mac Daddy. It does blah, 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 blah. And it's this price. The analytical is going to look at that salesperson and say, you know what? I need to do more research. And he's going to turn around and he's going to walk out the door because now you overloaded him with information and he thought he knew everything and now he doesn't. And so he's leaving. So if you are with an analytical and you are showing homes and the analytical turns and looks at you and says, this is the home, you need to stop dead in your tracks, do not offer any more information and you need to write the offer right there while they're with you. When I'm out with an analytical, I like to have hard copies of my purchase agreements with me because if they're actually ready to make the decision, I am not going to let them go home, overthink it, and start doing more research before they sign the contract. They will do that anyway after they're under contract, but the pressure is off of them in that sense because they already wrote the offer. They're comfortable with their decision. They just want to make sure there's nothing that they forgot. So it's better also to go through a contract with an analytical in person because they're actually going to want to read it with you. They want to see what you have to say about the contract. It's important. The small details are important to them. So please keep that in mind. Um, do not ask an analytical how they feel. You need to let them be them. They need you to confirm their values. You need to confirm what you're saying to them. You need to confirm what they're saying to you when you're doing your discovery with them. They need to know that you heard everything that they say and how they are going to test you is they are going to throw out something, a question to see if you know the answer. If you know the answer 100% accurately, then answer it. If you do not know it 100% accurately, you need to tell them, you know what? I am not sure about that answer. Have you done the research on that? Do you know the answer? If not, I will find it. And more times than not, they will tell you, oh yeah, this is what I found. And now they're teaching you something and they feel good about that. But you have to own that you don't know the answer. If you tell them something that is not accurate, they are not going to trust you. All trust is broken because they feel like you lied to them. So you have to be really, really careful with that. So let's open this up for discussion. I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about this because then we're gonna go into mirroring and matching. And I see a lot of chats in here. So let me see what we got. Working in time, share the past seven years. All I think every time she describes someone is man, I've had them on extreme cases. <laughs> Deborah, that's funny. And it's so true. By the way, where I first learned personality profiling and mirroring and matching is I, um, I learned in timeshare. 21 years ago is when I learned this originally. So I totally get what you're saying, Deborah. <laughs> and you will find in my workshops that a lot of training I've taken from timeshare 
and put it in the psychology of real estate because a lot of people from timeshare can't figure out how to put it into the real estate translation, which is very interesting. So I've done that for everybody that's been in that background, okay? All right, who else has questions here? Where yes, are you going drivers to find can also be challengers, by the way. Yes, go ahead. Where would you go to find that info that you were just talking about? Tiffany has it. She is definitely allowed to send it out. I have three workshops coming up in Florida where we will be going over this really in depth. And those come with workbooks that have all of this in it, including my chapter, the psychology or the psychology of the client, where it breaks all of it down very specifically. Okay. All right, let's see here. What, what else do we have here? Drivers, yes, drivers can be challengers. Drivers, let, let's talk about drivers for a minute. <clears throat> A driver needs to respect you. And with a driver, if they bark at you and you do not bark back at them with your knowledge, you will lose that. They need to know that they cannot push you around. If you allow a driver to push you around, they are going to continue to push you around. You have to take control of your clients. And with the driver, sometimes it's like, listen, I completely understand what you're saying. I completely hear what you have to say. I'm trying to protect you. And I would like it if you would treat me as the expert. That will get their attention. And they will be like, you know what? Okay, I got this. I get it. Bill, what do you want to say about that? Bill's over there clapping. He's like, yes. <laughs> You're muted. There you go. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You've got to, you with they're, they're, they're used to leading. They're used to leading. They know everything. They're not challenged. And that is when you said that thing about, um, I'm the expert. I appreciate it. If you would treat me as the expert here, that's, that, that's just gold because you have to establish your leadership and they'll calm down. They will calm down. You'll see them go. Okay. I don't have to lead this situation. I got this guy. Exactly. And or a gal, or a gal, sorry. Right, and I'm gonna give you guys an example of my driver side. When I'm in work mode, I'm very much a driver, okay? And you have a home life personality and you have a work life personality. So in my work life, I'm very much an expressive driver. In my home life, I'm very much an amiable expressive because I don't like conflict at home, but I don't mind conflict in work. So let's put this into perspective. I needed, and I wanted to get out of my truck a few years ago, and I, I inherited the truck in a divorce. I didn't want the darn truck. I'm stuck with the truck. So the dealership calls me and says, hey, we can trade in your truck and get you something different and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, great. And I'm like, well, listen, I'm a very busy person. And he, here's key words that you need to listen for in a driver. Like I'm a very, I'm a very busy person. I have a very limited amount of time. These are the two types of cars I'm interested in these colors. Now, if we can work it out where we can do all of the numbers on the phone and get it all worked out, you can run my credit, do everything you want to do. Let's work it all out. Have the two cars in front for me. I will drive both of them and tell you which one I want. How does that sound? <laughs> They're like, okay, yeah, we can do that. So they run my credit. They work the numbers. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can get your payments where you want it to be. And yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, okay, now I need to be clear. I have an hour and 20 minutes that I, that I can spend with you guys. So when I get there, I want to test drive both cars, have the paperwork ready on both of them. I will tell you which one I want. And I need to be in signing those papers and be out of there within an hour and 20 minutes. Now, Mariah, my assistant is with me at the time. We get to the dealership. They've got the two cars pulled up. I'm like, okay, this is looking good. We're, we, we've got it in place, right? And the guy comes out, he, he explains, he's the salesperson I've been talking to and whatever. And I'm like, nice to meet you and whatever. And he says, we've got a problem. Oh yeah, what's the problem? <laughs> and I'm very irritated because I've driven an hour to get here. And he goes, we can't make either of these two cars work. You're too upside down on your truck. Excuse me? You told me on the phone that we could do this. You told me on the phone that everything was done and that I just needed to pick which one I wanted. And now you're telling me that that's not real. That's not true. I need to see your manager. 
He's like, well, in the meantime, all the managers coming out, I can show you what you want, like what we do have for you and that we can make work. I'm like, sure, okay, let's see what you have. He takes me to a leaf. Now, those of you that drive a leaf, love you, glad you have one. I'm not a leaf person. Do I look like a leaf person? I'm not. And I flipped out. Mariah had her little shield. She's like, no, because that's what they do around me when this side comes out. They're like, oh, here's the guard. Like, I need to protect myself from what's about to happen. <laughs> and I looked at him and I'm like, do I look like a leaf person? Does this really look like a car I'm going to drive? I'm trading in a Pro X4 Nissan Titan and you want me to drive a leaf of all things, really? Like, is there somewhere in the middle we can be? <laughs> and I'm like, you're wasting my time. I told you my time is valuable. I need to see your manager. So his manager comes out and I said, first of all, how dare you bring me out here telling me that you have a, a deal for me and you really don't have a deal for me and you want me to drive a leaf. That's not what we discussed. That should have been discussed on the phone. And I can't believe that you actually wasted my time like this. So don't call me. Don't have your salespeople call me. Take me off your list. I will not be back here. You need to stay away from me because you lied to me. That is a driver for you guys. Now, if they would have been honest on the phone with me and told me the option, we would have had a completely different conversation because they were direct and honest. But because they chose to be deceitful, they lost me. We were done. So when you have a driver that's challenging you, you need to be direct, you need to be precise, you need to be honest, and you need to demand their respect. None of those people could demand my respect because they lost it when they lied to me. There was nothing they could say in that moment that would make me respect them or come over to the other side because they lied to me and they wasted my time. And with drivers, time is the most important thing for them. They need to be on time. And they don't want you to waste their time. If you waste their time, you're nothing to them because you don't understand their world. Now, when you're mirroring and matching, all you really have to know with this, I want you guys to understand the different personalities, but it's really only important if you're kind of having an issue like they're yelling at you and you need to bring them under control or there's some type of conflict that you need to resolve. But when you're first meeting them and you're building instant rapport and you're gaining influence in their life, really what you need to focus on is mirroring and matching. Now, here's what I mean by this. If they have their arms crossed and they're standing there talking to you, you need to have your arms crossed standing there talking to them and you're gonna feel dumb. You're gonna be like, oh my gosh, they know that I'm mirroring them. They know what I'm doing. They don't, they don't even pick up on it. Now I know Sunshine was at my last workshop. Sunshine, have you been practicing mirroring and matching? I've been, and I did feel stupid when you said that I was like, oh good, it's not just me. I've been practicing on my boyfriend uh -huh. and he doesn't know, but it's helped. And the information, he's a driver. He's a, a driver expressive. And I'm an expressive, imagine that, driver backwards. So we're backwards. Okay. So this information has helped our personal relationship more than anything right now. But yes, I've been, um, and he does. He stands there with his arms crossed all the time. And I took offense to it at first. And then I found out that's just the way he is. So I've been standing there. He doesn't even notice I'm doing it. No, but, but what happens? It. He dropped his arms. When yeah. you have your arms crossed, guys, and because their arms are crossed, what happens is they start to feel uncomfortable that your arms are crossed. So they uncross theirs. Yep. It's very funny how it happens. If you have a person who's sitting across from you at a listing appointment and one of them is sitting there with their arms crossed and they're back in their seat like this, you can't move forward in your listing people because they're not into what you're saying. You have to cross your arms, sit exactly how they're sitting and wait for them to talk or do something. Because if you don't, if you don't bring them in onto the table, you're dead in the water. You have no chance with these people. 
because they're not listening to what you're saying. They don't care. Now, I'm going to say this, and some of you are not going to understand this. Those of you that have been to the workshop will. When I'm at a listing appointment or when I'm at a buyer's appointment and they've got their arm crossed and they're acting like they don't really care, I take everything away from them. I do. I'm at a listing appointment. I have everything sitting on the table ready to talk to them about their numbers. And if one of them is not in the picture, I will physically take that paperwork off and put it back in my bag and say, John, I'm really not, I, I am not convinced that you want to sell your home. So if that's the case, the numbers don't matter. Am I wrong? Do you really want to know what the numbers are? And Deborah, who's been in timeshare, knows that that's a takeaway where at the end I gave it back to them in the direction I want them to go. Amen, sister. <laughs> yeah, and I will physically take it. Now, I will tell you, I'm at my team's listing appointments when this is going on, and Linda is the number one. She's like, Grow, because she sees me take it. She wants to climb under the table. She's very amiable, and she's an analytical, and she's like, they're going to scream at us. <laughs> they're going to kick us out. It never happens ever. I will physically take it and I'll say, John, I, I know Emily is interested in, in selling this home. Okay. But I'm not totally convinced you are. So you're going to have to sell me on why you want to sell this home because I'm not convinced. And the numbers don't matter if you don't want to. Would you agree? That's a tie down, by the way. And they're like, John is going to drop his arms. He's going to lean forward and he's going to say, well, I, I want to know what the numbers are. Okay. Why do you want to know what the numbers are? Do you want to sell? Because I don't need the practice in showing you numbers, John. Now, I know a lot of you are sitting on this call right now and you're like, oh my goodness, I could never say that. Tiffany's like, Holy crap, that makes me sick thinking about it, okay? But I will tell you that I have a 96.6% .6 close rate on listings for a reason. And it's because I don't let people get away with anything. I never lose eye contact with them, ever. If I lose eye contact, I dip to catch their eyes. They know they can't get away from me. They're not gonna lie to me because they know that I'm gonna know because I've never lost eye contact with them. But when I say something, I'm nice about it. I am. I'm like, John, I'm not convinced you want to sell. You're going to have to tell me why you do because I'm not convinced. And the numbers don't matter unless you tell me why. So do you want me to show you the numbers? Why? That's not mean. I'm about not wasting his time or mine. They showed me the home. It's lovely. I want to hear about it. The same thing is true when I'm working with buyers. If I have a buyer and I'm mirroring and matching them and they're all excited about a home, then I'm gonna go into that with them. I'm like, okay, you're really excited about this home. Now here's the trick guys. This is why I show five properties and at least one is going under contract. Please explain to me why you love this home. And I'm excited with them. So if they're all excited, oh my gosh, I love this home, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, really? I'm so excited for you. Why do you love this home? If they're like, wow, I really love this home. Really? Tell me, what is it about this home that you love? Do you see the mirroring here and the matching? Whatever their tonality is, that's what you need to stick with. If you stick with the tonality and speed at which they are speaking, you have them. People like doing business with people that are like themselves. Always have that in the back of your mind. Now, does it mean you're lying about who you are? You're still you. You're still saying the things that you wanna say. You're just communicating more effectively because you're speaking on their frequency. Think about that. I still said to John what I wanted to say as far as the listing presentation was concerned. I'm still being me, but I am matching his speed. I am matching his body language. I am communicating with him effectively because I am matching him. 
We are in a communication business. And the more effective we communicate with people and match who they are, the more successful we will be. So let's open this up to questions and scenarios. You guys are allowed to ask me how I would handle different scenarios. You can comment on anything. The floor is yours. And by the way, this is an abbreviated version. <laughs> Gina, I, I just want to say thank you so much because every time I listen to you, I get something that I use in not only my professional life, but in my personal life. And it, it always turns out to be amazing. One of my favorites is, why do you think I deserve that tone? And I use that with my children and it's amazing because it stops them dead in their tracks and it makes them go, huh. <laughs> it, it's, it's amazing. And I, I, I just, I, I have to say thank you and you're, you just keep doing what you do because you're amazing. Thank, thank you. you. And you need to come to one of the workshops, Jonathan. You know, I was trying to come to the last one and I couldn't because my father-in-law fell down, broke his leg. It was a disaster and I couldn't go anywhere because I had double kid duty. So next one I'm on. Well, we are in got it. Got it. Boca Raton. And my wife is doing your book. Holy shit. Sorry. Really? Yes, yes. She's, she loves it. I love so that. So that's pretty cool too. Um, yeah, so the next one, I'm trying to see if I can, if, if when um, she's off and available to come. My daughter's got stuff that we have to attend to, so we can't frequently go together. Right, right. It's well, got to be really planned out to do that. Don't forget, but, we're going to be in Melbourne in January, Boca Raton, and Tampa. I'm doing right. I'll do the Boca one Florida easy because that's. <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely be in the Boca one, and and I know I was. I've been talking to Tony and Fred about that one. So. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, who else? And thank you for your comments, Jonathan. Oh, please, thank you for doing this. Who else wants to talk? Hi, Tina. Hi, Sasha. So I am so glad I jumped on the call. I'm on my way to do a um, a walkthrough for a closing today. Mm -hmm. And it's just a great reminder on how to, to mirror these people. Because like, I know as soon as I get there, the husband's going to be like, oh, we want this, 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 this done. And I'm like, whoa, we're late for that. We're closing in an hour. And it's a good refresher because I have to remind myself, stop, mirror, and just do what they're doing, mm -hmm. matching so that I can get across to them. The, okay. These are very crazy people. <laughs> Sasha, let me help you with this ahead of time, okay? You're going to, you're going to a final walkthrough with somebody that is a challenge, okay? And they're going to ask for more things. As soon as you walk in, you need to set the expectation so that that doesn't even come up. Okay. Psychologically, you're going to prime them for exactly where you want them to go. And what that looks like is, what is his name? His name is David. All right. So David, I just want to set the proper expectation of this part of the process. We're going to go through the home. We're going to check off the list of everything that you have actually asked for. Nothing else matters because this is what we have to stick to. We're in the final stretch. This is what they agreed to fix. We want to make sure that everything is cleaned up and ready for you guys to take possession. And that's all this is today. Okay. Perfect. And by you setting that expectation and you need to get commitment from him in that moment. So do you agree with that is what you ask him? Is there any questions you have before we start? And that's it. You Perfect. go through your items, you have them sign off. You walk out the door. Okay. Beautiful. Thank and you. Any problems, you call me. I will. I got your number. <laughs> okay. okay, good. All right. Who else wants to talk? All I can say is over all the years that I've done uh, the disc profiling, um, you always pick up something new because everybody interprets it differently and you can apply it in different ways. And today is no exception. Pick up on new things and uh, even your expressions and how you, the eye contact, the, the words that you choose is perfect. You, you can never take this course enough. Mm -hmm. 
I agree with that. And sometimes, guys, I'm a master at this. I don't even realize that I'm doing it. I'll be sitting across from somebody and my legs will be crossed because their legs are crossed. And sometimes I'll look at it and I'll start laughing because I've become such a chameleon in this. But I still have to remind myself to slow down when I'm with people that are slower. And sometimes I have to bring my assistant in. I put people around me that offset my personality so that if I need them to step in in a situation because I'm not going to be able to gracefully take care of it <laughs> because I'm too much of a driver and an expressive, my assistant Mariah, and I should say we call her my creative director now because she does so much more than be my assistant, she sometimes has to take over with my amiable clients or my analytical clients because I'm going to lose my patience especially my amiables. I will have to pull her in and say, Mariah, can you please have this conversation with them because I'm going to lose it and I don't want to lose it on them. It's not their fault. They're just being them. And I am not in a place today where I can, I can match them. And understanding that about yourself is the key to this. You need to understand who you are and when you can handle certain situations and when you can't. If you're an amiable and you have a driver client, guys, that is going to be your biggest challenge. Mariah cannot deal with drivers. She curls up into a ball. So I handle all driver conversations. And there are times where I have to take over clients for some of my amiable and my, and my analytical agents because they can't, the, the driver is bulldozing them because they can so sometimes I have to take over with that. So, Bill, I, I don't know what, what, it, what it is with you, but I just love your energy. So tell me what you're thinking right now. Um, I've just been kind of messing with, uh, with, with Tiffany uh, because she just sneezed but was on mute. Um, and, uh, and I said, bless you, Tiffany. It looked really wet and messy. Um, but anyway, no, your, your class, I mean, this is most real estate agents and what we're trying to do differently here at the real at the gps group they they aren't salespeople, uh -huh. and what we are learning is you're learning sales not 101 i mean yes disc profile is 101 but the level that we're learning this is going to completely set you apart and make your job so much easier. Um, and it's probably, <clears throat> this is a lot more vital than most of the things that you're going to do. Understanding and doing this is, is uh, um, practicing it is um, gonna be very, very uh, beneficial. As you can already tell, I know you get the feeling, it's like, wow, man, if I can get this done, you can get it done. Mm -hmm. um, because it only makes sense and it's, and it's clear because different people, and it's not not being yourself, right? I mean, you have to do different things when you, um, you know, in other in other situations, you have to, you know, you're, you're talking to somebody that's not doing well at church or something like that, you kind of tone it down, you bring it down, you read people. Um, you got to understand it is a it is you're you're going out there and being the leader. And, um, you know, they they won't they wouldn't question a doctor. They wouldn't question someone who's given them advice on their kidney stones or their kidney cancer. Um, and this is a big decision too. So um, it's really good. It's great. I, I want you guys to think too about agent attraction. I want some hands here. How many of you are actually agent attracting? I just hired two last week. Okay. Here's the deal. When you use personality profiling and mirroring and matching to age and attract, think about this. You build instant rapport because you're just like them. So if you're talking to an agent, let's say you are going in and introducing yourself at an open house to another agent, which I do. And I'm just like, hey, I'm Tina Valiant. I know you see me over here all the time. And I just wanted to introduce myself to you because I see your signs. And then they start talking to me. And I'll compliment them, but I want them to start speaking so that I can hear their speed of speech. And if I can tell if they're thinking based or feeling based, if I can connect with them on a level where we are the same, 
they are going to have a more open conversation with me and they are going to remember me. And if they're a driver, I'm gonna to get to the point. If they're an expressive, we're gonna have a great time talking about it. If they're an amiable, I'm not going to push them. And I know that it's going to take them a long time to make a decision and that's okay. And if they're analytical, I'm going to have them do a ton of research. I'm going to point them to the directions that I want them to do the research. And then we're probably going to have to have three or four calls with them to answer any of their questions as they're doing the research. And then we're going to come to a decision. So they're going to be a year down the line. And that's okay because even in agent attraction, we're building a pipeline. It doesn't have to be instantaneous. It takes building the relationships to get agents to come over with you. And no now doesn't mean no forever on anything. That's with clients, that's with agents, attraction, everything. No now does not mean no forever. So more thoughts because we have five more minutes and that's it. <clears throat> Tina, hi. <laughs> hi. Thank you so much always for this class. I'm, I'm always blown away every time I hear you say uh, this information because um, it's definitely something that I want to work towards and something that um, I want to eventually master because I see how important it is. Now, just think about this. I would love to see a skit. I wrote it in the chat there of an S dealing with a D. <laughs> Because that's my personality type. And I really have a hard time dealing with drivers because um, part of me wants to, you know, stroke the ego. And then the other half of me is like, I don't really care. <laughs> you know? So um, it, it's a really difficult personality for me to, to deal with because I also had to deal with it for a long time. And it's just like we butted heads. Well, and from my understanding, you are an S and a D in your last personality test with Max. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So it's kind of funny that you have a hard time dealing with a driver and it's almost like facing the side of yourself that you may not like. And I want you to think about that. That's the side of you that you probably try to suppress a little bit mm -hmm. because you don't want to be too harsh. And so when they are like that, you're like, Mm -hmm. I know <laughs> about myself. Why can't you? Right. It's kind of that's, what your, you know. that's your limiting belief. Mm -hmm. So I want you to take that strength that you have, like those races that you do and everything else that you're achieving right now. Yes, I watch you on Facebook. You're kicking butt and taking names, girl. And I want you to put that energy into talking to a driver. If they snap at you, I need you to snap back at them. Hey. Don't talk to me that way. When you're ready to have a real conversation, let's get back on the phone with each other. Okay. When you say that to a driver, they're like, oh, this girl commands respect. And now they will respect you. If they're testing you and needling you and you're rolling over, you're not the right agent for them. They want somebody that is going to be a bulldog in the field for them. So they're going to test you to see if you're going to be that bulldog. You need to show them that you are. And don't be afraid. That that's actually had um, an opposite effect also. Okay, so so tell I had me. An, uh, an, a difficult time because when I've met drivers and I've gone ahead and kind of, you know, met them, whether mm -hmm. it's it's it might be too much for them, to where they just bulldoze like really bulldoze over me, and then I'm just like, you know what, I do the flight or fight or fight. I'm either gonna fight or I <laughs> I ghost. Uh huh. And you can find diplomatic ways to work on this. So maybe you and Max and I can get on a call on one of his coaching calls and, you know, discuss how you can curve your speech of what you're saying to deflate the situation and keep everything calm for you, but they still respect you and, and you command respect. There's ways to use specific words with them that capture their attention. Okay. Tina, do you also do Tina, you. do you also feel like you can you can as a sale as a sales as a salesperson we've also got to be we've also got to have the mindset of of being a, at least or in any relationship sometimes you got to be in the mind of I've got to be a servant here uh -huh. so, also uh -huh. so some of the stuff do you agree Tina that you can actually say it with a smile 
Absolutely. I mean, you can say almost anything, uh, Delania, with with a smile. It's like, you know, Jim, you're such an ass. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, you you say it with a smile um, or a hole. Actually, that's and, actually something that I do. <laughs> you know, and and uh, you know, and then and working in the strong the strong um, phrase that that Tina that Tina said. It's just you know when you when you say it with a smile and when you're ready to have a real conversation, we're going to. But until then, it's kind of, gosh, we're kind of button heads. And I don't want to butt heads with you, man. Why, why are we button heads, Jim? Uh-huh. And, um, and nod, and nod a lot, yeah. you know, especially when you're asking for agreement. You don't have to be Inflection mean. too, right? Inflection too. Like if they're being nasty and they're like, you know, and they're being jerks to you, you can be a jerk back to them. But if they're saying something and they're just being very stern and they're kind of trying to bulldoze you, you can do exactly what Bill said and have that smile on your face, even if you're on the phone with them. Or I will even say to a driver, you know what? We need to FaceTime. We need to have this conversation where I can see your face because I feel like you're being a bully right now. And I don't think that's what you're meaning. So I need to see your face. That disarms that. When you say, I feel like you're being a bully, but I don't think that's what you're intending. And I need to see your face. They're like, oh yeah, I'm not trying to be a bully. And I'm like, okay, awesome. Like, let's figure this out. And I'll disarm them with like a joke or like calling them out that I'm nice about it. But even then my agents are like, well, because they're like, oh my gosh, she just said that they're a bully. (laughs) But I can deflate the situation because I'm calling them out, but I'm doing it in a fun and gentle way. Like, hey, I don't think you're intending that, but that's how you're coming across. Do you mean that? And they're like, oh. No, I don't mean it that way. Okay, well, let's find some common ground here where we can talk about it. Does that help, Delinia? It does. Thank okay, you. And that helped a lot, Bill, for bringing that out. So thank you. Thank you. Hey, that. Tina, yeah. a lot of this also has to be, um, you have to take the personal aspect out of the conversation. Uh-huh. You have to learn how to do that, where you can still be personable and caring and genuine, but not in the way that you speak uh, in the, I should say, in the inflection that you speak with. Yes. yes. Not to carry your emotion when you speak, because mm-hmm. that's what turns people off. Mm-hmm. Right? Especially, and, and especially drivers. Especially, and drivers analytical. Right? especially drivers. They'll be like, I'm out. Yeah, why are you feeling right? like this? The it's second like- you start to get upset with me because I'm not signing paperwork or I don't like this house, right? And I recognize it in your voice, I'm immediately going to become defensive. Yep. It's human nature. To to defend against something you're not comfortable with. And they're not comfortable with that. That's what everybody I think has to really realize is how to read it quickly and learn what makes that person comfortable. And let's talk about that. That's why I have the thinking based and the feeling based. I'm not going to speak to a driver or an analytical about how I feel about something. I'm not going to ask them how they feel. So if they're being bullies or they're not pulling the trigger or they're not doing something, I'm going to be like, why are you being such a jerk? That's emotion. They don't get it. But if I'm like, you know, you're being kind of harsh in how you're delivering that information. Can I have a better understanding of what you actually mean right now? They're like, oh, because that's thinking based. That's logical. Have but you ever, switched, can I mention, yeah, you know, have, you ever uh, switched, have you ever switched and, and gone to the spouse? And there's like, almost like, okay, to the, to the driver. And then you just, you switch and take them off. I have, but I try not to. I don't want to take off my drivers because I heavily understand them. But I will say to them, when, and here's when you have a spouse, this is how it works, okay? You're talking to John. He's a driver. You're talking to Emily. She's an amiable. You're like, John, what are your thoughts on that? What do you think? And then he tells you, and then I'm like, Emily, how do you feel about this? You feeling good? Do you like it? Could you see your family here? I work at, like, and I will literally switch how I'm talking to them to make sure they're on the same page. And now all of a sudden you're on stage and you're an actor and that's what we do. As John's agents. sitting there and John's sitting there losing his mind because you're having this slow, nice conversation, feeling conversation. I want to peel my face off, please. Thank you. <laughs> right. Stick a pen in my eyeball. Please stop. Um, but it's, I'm really cool. sorry. You love your house. <laughs> don't exclude, don't exclude the, uh, don't exclude the other one, especially if you need a break, uh-huh. you need a break from the tension. 
and you have have that person there, it's, it's actually a blessing. Right, yeah, pump the brakes, shift gears, shift to the other person, right? And what I will say is I'll be like, John, I need to check with Emily for a minute. Let's get <laughs> Emily's opinion on everything. Got it. And then I'll be like, and John, it might drive you crazy because we're going to talk about feelings for a minute. So if you want to go look around the home again, you can. Yeah, so I'm sure I've walked out of a house before on a listing and one, either the wife or the husband looked at the other one and goes, <laughs> you know, exactly, exactly. Frank, are you out there getting your exercise? I am. Yes. I, I had, I was supposed to see a house this morning, but um, they canceled last night. I had to reschedule. Um, so a couple things I, I want to say, first of all, you're a great coach, Tina. I can say that firsthand knowledge as you're coaching me. And excuse me, I'm proud to say that. The other thing is, I agree. I really like, I started doing this um, because there's times when I walk in, I've really had to train myself. Like I'm walking fired up. Hey, let's go, baby. I can help you. Let's do this. And then one day my wife said, uh, Frank, most of the world can't handle how you normally are. And um, I said, well, you know, after I got over being offended, like, what do you mean? And she said, because it's, it's too much. You got to chill. So I did start going in with agents, you know, because I'm looking to buy the house. But I also work with agents as well. And I have found that the two-person approach when it's possible, I realize it's not always. It's super helpful. Um, you're right in what you said about you know, the different personalities, at least as far as I can tell. Here's one question I have for you. So I uh, went to an appointment and it was, a, it, it turned out to be a listing. She called me to buy it for cash, but it didn't make sense for her to do that. But she's ghosted me. I thought we really connected well, but I cannot get her back on the phone. So two questions. One, what, what did I miss in the appointment? I know you weren't there that she's ghosted me. I obviously didn't relate at some point. And then how do I at least find out Okay, cool. If you work with somebody else and I screwed it up, fine. But how do I get her to tell me I want to improve? Like, I want to get better. Mm -hmm. I don't want $650,000 listings going to somebody else. Right. Um, how do I get her to give me that feedback? Okay. So she's probably an amiable. Would you agree? She's probably what? An amiable. Yeah. So, yeah, I think so. Okay. Although so I, that, that, I, that, did, that wasn't prominent to me when I was meeting with her. Okay. Because, you know, I just reminded of this again, but yeah. So here's what you need to remember about amiables. It needs to be completely personal. It's all feeling based, backed by logic, which all sales is, even with drivers and analyticals. But right. the amiable, after you meet with them and you have your conversation and you've given them the facts and whatever the case may be, your follow up with them needs to be. I really enjoyed meeting with you. Thank you so much for just having a conversation with me. Leave it at that. Don't talk about business because they're completely feeling based. If all you talk yeah. to them about is business, they shut down because you don't really care about them. Right. So that yeah, I was looking back through my text and it was like, man, we're going to sell this thing for you. Let's go, baby. Let's do this. Yeah, no. With like, an amiable, you can't be that like, way. Yeah, let me completely ask you a disappeared, and so that that actually that that, would, that that pertains to Frank's situation. So yes. when when you're like Brian Offner, do you know who Brian Offner is? Uh -uh. uh Well, Brian Offner that he he works for for Fannie Mac and he does a lot of stuff. But what he talks about in his in his social media posts is you do uh, four light, one heavy, right? So you do four about your family, one about work. Uh -huh. So so like where Frank was was raring to go and ready to do this stuff, like where what would be a good ratio for him to work on that person to be able to, Hey, look, I really care about you, but business, you know, how many times does he bring up business over the emotion that that person is obviously showing that that's what they want more of, because there, there's gotta be, a, there's gotta be some sort of point where you reach where it's like, all right, enough, enough, you know, heart hugging. Let's talk business. Right. Cause that's really why you're there. Well, yes, you're there to, to make them feel good, and to develop a relationship, but you're also there to do work. I'm, and don't I'm, forget that the time is valuable and you could be everybody's friend, but that doesn't pay the bills. 
Right. I mix that. When I make an amiable or, or even an expressive, but an amiable especially, I'm like, okay, I know that this choice is really hard for you. So let's walk through that. What, what, what are your fears? What is the thing that you're most scared about with this? Because amiables need to be able to get that out. It's still business related. It helps me. It gives me a roadmap of how to help them. But I'm identifying their fears so that I can help overcome them. And if you don't get those fears out in the beginning with an amiable, you will never get them out because it'll come out at the last minute and now you don't have time to actually address them or they never actually share them with me because they don't think you care. So I'll tell them, especially if I know I'm with an amiable, I know they're scared to death. I know they are. They haven't even told me they're scared and I'm going to address that. And I'm going to say, okay, you showed me the home. I love it. I think that you've done an amazing job here. I know that this is probably a really hard choice for you. Is that, is that correct? And they're like, yeah. Okay. So talk to me about that. What are the fears that you have? Why is this so hard for you? I need to understand so that I can support you more. That is the key to an amiable. Okay. Cool. That is, that's so good. I, I uh, kind of like uh, be a truth teller and a truth seeker. Like I haven't asked that question. Like, what, you know, what would you fear? Or what's, you know, what's holding you back or what's troubling you about this? I haven't gotten to that, but that's a question in my next presentation later this morning. That's a really well, good question too. And with the people that you're working with, Frank, people that either want to sell their house for cash now or whatever the case may be, they are in a situation almost every single time and why I was so successful with distressed homeowners and knocking on doors before I came to Arizona was because that was what I identified with. I was like, look, I know you're scared. I know you don't know what your options are. Let me help you figure it out, but I need to understand your fears. Yeah. And that makes sense. I've had, I've, I've had them tell me before, I hate men. I don't even know why I let you in the house. I can't stand men. And because a lot of them have been, you know, whatever the case is, gone through some issue with a man. And um, I should have, that, that was just so far from my mind. I was just so jacked about helping us sell the house. But, but anyway, that's uh, right. But that's where you tell them that you identify as, as a pole and then you're okay. You're not really a man. You're not a woman. So you're good. <laughs> no, yeah. people like that. I mean, I've met men that are like, oh, I, I don't even know why I'm talking to you. You're a woman or whatever. And I'm like, well, hopefully getting to know me a little bit, I'll be able to change your opinion that not all of us are the same. So maybe we could do that together. Let's change each other's opinions. Yeah, that's good. Identify it where they are. All right, guys, we have to wrap up. We've gone over in time. You guys, my I'm available. Like my email is Tina at tinavaliant.com. If you guys have questions down the road, please look on Eventbrite for Melbourne, Boca Raton and Tampa. I have heard that Elizabeth Riley is going to join us, join us in Tampa, which is very exciting. So um, I know Max and his whole team are going over to the Tampa side. Eugene is doing a great job of setting up Melbourne and guys invite people for Boca Raton. Tony's having a hard time getting people down there. So please help us out with that area. Okay. Take care everybody. Thank you, Tina. My pleasure. Thank you, Tina. Thanks, Tina.